Hi, and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video, we're going to determine the types of sampling that are being used just by going through many different types of examples and trying to pick out key differences as to what sampling is being done. Okay, so let's give this a try by jumping into these examples. Okay, so in my first example, uh, we have a teacher that is interested in finding out if students who attended the optional study session did better on the exam. The way the teacher is going to find uh, out this information is they first broke the students into two groups, men and women, and then they randomly picked three from each group. Okay, so here's some things that we want to know about the sampling. It looks like uh, the, the teacher first broke them into two groups. Okay, so that's very important. Uh, then, when it came to those two groups, it looks like the teacher really didn't care how big the groups were. They just randomly picked three from each of those groups. Okay, so since the teacher is splitting them into groups, but not really caring how much uh, they're taking from each group, this is an example of quota sampling. Not bad. Let's try another one of these. In this next example, you want to try and determine how many students in a school bring a packed lunch, okay? So how are you going to do this? Well, you're gonna give a survey to everyone in your third period class and simply ask them. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, notice how you're not necessarily asking all students. No, instead you're asking just the ones in your third period class. And, you know, maybe you're doing that just because it's the easiest way to do it. Well, this is an example of a convenient sample. Remember, this is the, the easiest type of sample to do because uh, you're really just, you know, kind of asking people who are easy to get a hold of. All right, let's try another one of these. Okay, here we have a researcher that wants to see what type of vehicle is the most common on a particular intersection. So the way they're going to do that, uh, they decide to sit on the corner of the road and simply record every fifth vehicle. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. Um, well, notice how they have some sort of system in place. They want to pick every fifth vehicle as they're watching them go down the road. So it's not random, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to do. This is an example of systematic sample. So they have some sort of uh, system in place that is making sure they record every fifth one. All right, moving on to yet another example. Here we have a coffee company that wants to determine if a pallet of bags of coffee is being packaged to the proper way. Okay, so they have just this giant pallet of coffee and they don't know if it's being packaged correctly or not. So what do they do? Well, first they split the pallet into caffeinated and decaffeinated. Okay, now there is actually twice as many caffeinated bags of coffee versus the decaffeinated stuff. So they randomly sample twice as many caffeinated bags as they do decaffeinated bags. Okay, so we have some very uh, similar things as to our teacher example earlier on. So what I'm seeing here is that they first split it into groups. They got their caffeinated group and their decaffeinated group. So you know, that seems similar. Uh, but the difference here is that they notice that there's twice as many caffeinated bags. And so later on when they go to sample, they sample twice as many of the caffeinated bags. So not only are they splitting it into groups, but they're making sure that from each of those groups, they're representing uh, the, the proportion of the group to the entire whole. Okay, so this is a very special uh, type of sampling. We would call this stratified sampling. Very nice. All right, let's continue on. In this example, we have a school that wants to determine if students who take the bus have more free time than students who do not take the bus. 
So the way the school will figure this out is they will create a list of all students uh, that are taking the bus. And they will take this list and simply put it into a computer. Now what that computer is going to do is it's going to choose 10 students from that list at random and they're all going to take a survey. Okay, let's see if we can see what's going on here. Well, they're not really, you know, uh, uh, splitting students into groups and surveying each group, not really doing that. They're only looking at the students who are taking the bus. And it looks like they're taking a list of all the students who are taking the bus and simply feeding those into a computer, which is choosing 10 at random. Okay, so this is not a, a systematic sample. It's not taking every 10th one. It's just taking 10 students in total uh, and doing it at random. So we would consider this a simple random sample. Not bad. Let's see one more example. Okay, for this last one, we have a politician that is trying to determine if they should run for president. They decide to survey the people inside the United States. And the way they do this is first they split the entire U.S. into counties. Now there's lots of different counties in the U.S., but out of all of those counties, they decide to choose 100 of them at random. Now from each of these counties, they then do a random sample inside each one. All right, so let's see what's going on here. So it looks like they're kind of breaking things into groups. That's what we see with uh, splitting the entire U.S. into counties. But they don't necessarily choose something from each of those groups. Instead, they only choose 100 of those counties, and they're chosen at random. And furthermore, uh, when they actually look at each individual county, they go ahead and they sample that at random as well. So this would be an example of cluster sampling. We can see that because they're first splitting it into clusters, uh, they're randomly choosing a portion of those clusters, and then they're randomly sampling with inside each cluster. So hopefully these examples help you uh, wrap your mind around these different types of samplings, and you can see there are many different types, uh, and definitely look for those, those little differences among each ones, whether they're breaking things into groups, uh, and where that randomness is playing a part. All right, thank you for watching My Secret Math Theater.